Hey, everybody, welcome back to Build at Home. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm going to be chatting with Rachel Ray. But we, before we chat with Rachel, I want to remind you guys to visit nokidhungry.org. Due to school cancellations because of COVID-19, 641 million school meals have been missed. And there's a lot of kids who depend on that food every day. So if you're looking for a way to help, if you want to donate, visit nokidhungry.org. And now I want to welcome our guest, Rachel Ray. I mean, you almost need no introduction. Uh, I see you're in your kitchen. I am always in my kitchen, whether uh, we're taping from here or, <laughs> or not. Uh, I, I can usually be found here um, whenever we're home. I live in the Adirondack Mountains. I worked all my life to, to build a kitchen of, of my dreams so that I could look through the whole house because I know I never, I rarely get to leave the kitchen. So you can kind of look down through the whole house from the kitchen. I love um, that. This is my point of view. My husband is uh, normally um, just behind me over our garage. He built his dream studio. So he's usually in his happy place and this is my happy place. But now it's literally our home studio. John's behind the computer. Say hi, honey. Hi. <laughs> hi, John. He's eating his brunch. Thank you for starting the show with No Kid Hungry. They are one of our partners since day one of our brand, No Kid Hungry, um, slash share our strength, of course. Um, since the day we started our brand, John and I, because we don't have human children, we wanted to pay forward to the next generation somehow. And we also wanted to make sure that we had a, a means to take care of the generation before us. So since we started our brand, we've used it for philanthropic um, mm -hmm. pursuits. Uh, and we used it as an example of how to build our pet care food line for, for animals, because of course we live with a pit bull. So uh, it's extremely important um, that people understand exactly um, what share our strength and, and no kid hungry means the only food security so many children have in this country is their access to school food uh -huh. and we've lobbied for over a decade to try and secure 12 months or year-round school food and to improve school food nutrition in this country um unfortunately that's been a roller coaster ride i, I don't understand why is it's the only way to control health costs of the future but regardless uh our our friendship and partnership with them is extremely important to us. Mm -hmm. And it, they're one of our largest gives from this week's give of $4 million. Uh, and they are building a map and they already have an app mm. to help communities, large and small, find that food for their children and secure that food. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with the gives is to kind of patchwork it in uh, working with some people that focus on uh, low income and senior dense uh, uh -huh. communities that have populations with people 60 and over that have very limited access to good nutrition to begin with. So uh, that's Feeding America is our partner for that. And on and on and on. And of course, World, World uh, Central Kitchen, Jose Andres, who's a mm. nerd. We're helping him get up and running in Chicago. So I really appreciate that you're, you're, you're messaging that and educating people because I don't yeah. realize how many kids are really at risk of going hungry every day, period. Not during the time of COVID, but all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I'll think about how frightening it is to be a little kid and you can't see your friends face, you know, you can't play with them and touch them. You can only see them on a computer screen. And if your only safe place to eat every day was school, how trapped you must feel, right? It's so scary. It's so scary for so many kids. You know, that's uh, an initiative from Verizon Media. But personally, too, I, I used to volunteer in the South Bronx. And that's when I realized the issue and the fact that a lot of schools would actually send food home with kids over the weekend. Yes. Yes. And I didn't that, know that that was happening. Isn't that great? The, the little health, health yeah. packages for the weekends. And you'd be so happy to know that there's so many communities that when schools or the local and federal government could no longer provide programming like that or cut back on it, mm -hmm. so many people reached out and in little pockets all over the country, they do that. They make green backpacks for their kids so they can go home food secure. 
and now we're all at home yeah so it's it's more important than ever you know uh, what are we up to now? Uh, over 15, 16 million jobless people. I mean, they, I know. there's so many people that are going to be food insecure in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. it's so important. And thank you for your service. And I love yeah. that well, you're no, doing community service. <laughs> well, thank you for your service. You mentioned the gives and all told uh, between the Rachel Ray, Rachel Ray Foundation and then the Yummo organization, you're donating $4 million, correct? Four million dollars, and our partners at Nutrish, our dear, dear friends and family, they feel like our extension of our own family. They added four million meals to that for animals, and an extra million dollars over the next several months to keep animals food secure because so many people were showing up at food lines, and even Jose Andres's kitchen is going to be handing them out with the human food because so many people were standing online for human food and saying when they got to the front. Do you have any food for animals too? Uh, and that's how the shelters are filling up. People just can't afford to feed the people and the four legged members of their family. So that's why we try to distribute the money, you know, as, as fairly as we could, but keeping in mind all of the needs of the community. You know, there, there are so many great corporations and private uh, gives I mean, four million doesn't add up to a lot, but we try to be very careful with with our give, and to not duplicate any one thing. To try and make a, a an even and fair distribution of the monies between large and small and grassroots, and yeah. you know, giant networks. I love that because one, you're doing it, but also I think by giving it to all those different organizations, you're letting all of us know all the different organizations right. that are available. Cause I think a lot of people don't even know where to start. That's right. We have 14 partners in total, all 14 of them. You can read in detail uh, about on our website, of course, but every single one of them we designated because they have very specific um, goals and every single person we've given to since day one has to be a measurable metric. You know, it has to be someone that we have vetted completely, that we believe we can see the measured outcome of where the money is going. So that we can say to our friends and neighbors, here's what physically happened. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's so much of it gets lost. And the larger the program gets, like with the trillions of dollars we're talking about now in our federal funding, mm -hmm. right, to help us all, no one seems to have a straight answer when are you going to see that relief? When are uh -huh. you going to get that check? And you can't do that with food. You uh -huh. can't do that with whether or not you literally have a, a, a roof over your head, food in your mouth, and water to drink, period. You have uh -huh. to know legitimately I can get it today, tomorrow, or the next day. So it's extremely important to me, obviously, I'm getting all whipped up, but it's extremely important to me that our partners be able to tell people specifically at mm -hmm. any given moment, here's where we're working. Here's where you can find us. Here's where you can get food. Here's where you can get water. You know, I, it, mm -hmm. it, it's, and I don't understand why we as a country can't get together and force our local, state, and federal, I think our, our in particular in our state, I think they're doing a great job statewide, but why can't we get them to answer us directly? When will we see these dollars? How do we access these funds? When will we all get our testing? Yeah. We should be accountable to one another. We yeah. have so many questions. You're asking all the questions that we all feel, you know, and it's so, such a frustrating time, which is why I love having tangible things that I can do or ways that I can help because there's so many uncertainties. Right. And I think that's one way that I've been able to kind of help with my anxiety. You and it seems like it. a way that you're channeling just all of your energy into sort of helping. You need to have focus. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm an old lady. Old, old people know this. It's so great to see a young, beautiful, strong woman saying it's really important to have purpose and get out there and do something every day. Yeah, it really is. And you, it seems like your team was able to do it so quickly. So I just want to applaud your team. What was the process for pulling all of these things together? And Well, Andrew, Andrew Kaplan, John Hall, my husband, John Cusimano, my friend, Charlie Bigiello, a lot of us, uh, Pascal, uh, all of our friends, everyone that works in our 
I don't, company is such a creepy word, but <laughs> everyone that works together in, in our community, we don't even all live in the same city, but we all have the same goals. And it, we all believe the same root philosophy that you don't have to be rich and you shouldn't have to be rich to have a rich life. Mm -hmm. That life is about so much more than your bank account. And that every dime we make, we should also be paying forward in some very significant way. Mm -hmm. And we all give as a community in that way, in that spirit. And everyone at the show, the magazine, every, every place that we work, and I mean we, there's lots of us, but that's what we have in common. We try and keep our humanity at the top of our list of our mm -hmm. goals. Not our celebrity and not our dollar line or our bottom line. Not that we don't all love it, having an income, of course. We love being gainfully employed. This is America. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing to be able to have a nice house and a pretty stove. But, you know, don't get me wrong. We're blessed. Mm -hmm. But as a philosophy, we try and keep our humanity at the top of the list. How are we helping each other with the information we're putting out there? How can we give back with the money we do take? From mm -hmm. the world and that we earn we work very hard for it but how do we also use it to do some good and that's the balance that we all believe in or we would not be together believe me mm -hmm. not in this marriage not in our company not in any of the friends that i call my second family that have been with us for years it's a common philosophy that we have that's amazing and in a moment like this it is a great equalizer where none of that stuff matters you know that's and right. it is just connection and, and pulling together um, which is why I'm happy to see that you're still doing your show because <laughs> it is such a community that you've built over the, the years. Um, so how has that been for you without an audience and just, cause I, you're, it's yeah. It's so weird. It's, it's so, so weird. weird. No, we, for so many reasons. Like, it's not weird that I talk to myself when I cook cause I did that for 20 years and I still do it on 30 minute meals. Like I'm, I'm alone in the kitchen except for the cameras. And that's why I could never I could never work with a director that would say camera one and camera two, that he would have to say, or she would have to say the name of the person because I couldn't get used to like working without humans, right? So then I finally get an audience and that's so fun and we joke with each other and I never leave the floor. We shoot three shows a day and I would spend all my time hanging out with people and telling jokes and, you know, just doing behind the scenes stuff. And they'd be like, Rachel, we do have other shows to do too. Go along, honey. Uh, but you know, it was so fun and it was so energetic in a different way. Now the, the trippy part for me is now that John and I are the studio and Isabu is our 15 year old pit bull is our only audience. <laughs> there's no applause. There's no Joey Cola, our fantastic comedian. Who's our warm up guy, like egging people into like cheering. Nothing I say is funny. And, and the worst part is. We donate all of our excess food to City Harvest and Food Bank every week, and our crew eats the, the, the dish that I make for each show. We put it out with the craft services, right? So I, I never eat until I go home and make dinner. And when I make dinner at home, I'm super silent, big glass of wine, vinyl records playing, or Law & Order, the gentle hum of Law & Order in the background. You know, something like that going on. But I'm quiet when I make dinner. It is so weird for me to make like one day, I think John and I taped seven different things between what I do for IGTV, wow. what we do for our show, what I was doing for other people. Um, so we did seven meals and I didn't eat any of them because <laughs> when you teach it or you perform it, you, you lose interest in it. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, this is so weird. I have to pick something to eat out of this today. <laughs> Because it's it's truly blurring the lines between my private time that I would have at home, right? You know, and and what always felt like work. And my job was to get other people excited about going into the kitchen, not to get them excited about what I was going to have for dinner. So hmm. it's it's blurring all these weird lines for me. Who knows? It may be some weird diet plan where I end up looking like <laughs> thick, thin, and <laughs> for very just, unfortunate reasons. I was gonna ask, so Never have you trust found- trust a cook who doesn't eat her own food, right? So that's gonna No, get but I get that. I get that. Right. I like to, I don't like to cook. It's like when I go to the grocery store, I don't even like to cook that night sometimes. Cause I'm like, I got the food. I'll cook right. it tomorrow. It's like, 
<laughs> feel like you did that as a project. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like because it's always been so separate. And I've been doing this for over 20 years, you know, cooking at Food Network. And then yeah, the daytime yeah. show is going into its 15th year. So for more than 20 years, the food that I make at work is 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 something that I share with yeah. everyone else. It's not something that I would sit down and eat. So it's 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 really trippy. I have no <laughs> appetite at night. It's very weird. I only uh, have an appetite when I'm when we have nothing whatsoever to tape. Then I'm like, oh, more spaghetti. <laughs> This is so bittersweet for me because I'm really not a whiz in a kitchen and I would just love to take the meals that you're making. Oh, I wish, I mean. Waste. We don't waste food in this house, believe you me. My mom lives across the street. My sister's a few miles away. Oh, uh, awesome. and, and, you know, there are people that come by out of kindness to leave things at the door and drop off. Believe me, not one bite of that food went <laughs> waste, my friend. But if you lived across my street, uh. you would be so happy. <laughs> one day, one day, maybe. So you're you're filming, you have the Rachel Ray show, you're filming two live shows a week and then you have some that are taped. Is that what's going on? We do, well, live to the computer or whatever from our house. <laughs> John and I can really tape anytime we want, but they edit it together into shows and we air the shows from our house on Mondays and Fridays on the daytime oh. show. And then every Saturday night, on Instagram TV, we put up a new show from our house. And this past week, we actually had three or four different things on IGTV because we did a five minute Passover, a mm -hmm. five minute Easter, and the Saturday night meal. And we're gonna test drive a couple other things like cook alongs with friends for Instagram TV. Um, we're, we're test driving a, a couple of other ideas. But for right now, it's Mondays and Fridays for the daytime show and Saturdays for IGTV. You are so busy, Rachel. <laughs> I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask like, during this downtime, have you started any new hobbies? But you seem pretty busy. <laughs> um, my new hobby list is pretty long. Uh, my husband gave me, um, because I love to do, uh, I call them foodles, food doodles as note cards for thank you oh. notes to people. So I have these paint pens, but he bought me a, a proper set of paints and an easel and all instruction books and all the paper and stuff so that I could become a fabulous watercolor artist. So that was on my COVID plan. And to pick up any of the three languages I am Ooh. almost proficient in, um, that was my second plan. And to go back to my love and study of percussion and instruments and master Ooh. drums was my other plan. Um, all I've really managed to do so far is complete my friend Harlan Coben's book, um, uh, The Boy in the Woods, uh, like a great thriller. Uh, all I've managed to really do in a couple of weeks is work and read a book and like a quarter of three or four other books. <laughs> So we'll see, we'll see. What are your plans? Do you have a, oh, I can use some of this extra time to be blah, 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 or now you're working Oh, no, I've been, time. I've been on my Zen. I've been meditating, I've been doing yoga, I've read nice. three books, I've been writing. Yeah. yeah, I'm here alone. So it's like, I have just time that I've never had. It's been beautiful, honestly. It's kind of a silver lining to all this. That's you know? why you're so glowy. You're really glowy. No, I'm just right by the window. <laughs> this is just direct sunlight. You got to know how to find your light on these things. <laughs> oh, Rachel, uh, I just have to say, I was so excited to chat with you. I've been a fan of yours for so long. And I'm um, just so happy that with all the stuff that you're doing for people and helping out communities during this time, we need it. And you've been a leader for so many people. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And if you're all alone, call anytime because I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't tempt me okay because i will show up on your door asking for leftovers okay no problem <laughs> we got them Thank so you people so can have a great rest yeah, of the day. you too and make sure that people can uh people can check you out on saturday right saturday on your ig live saturday and, then... on IG and mondays and fridays on our show all right thank you rachel we'll see Bye. you next time